Welcome to TFP, the Theater Folk Podcast. I am Lindsay Price, resident playwright for Theater Folk. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. Today we will be talking about a question that I know the answer to, but why should anyone else? But first, let's do some theater folk news. How do you submit a play to theater folk? Sometimes I get asked if I'm the only playwright at theater folk, and I am not. No, no. We feature the plays of 24 other writers at present, and we're always looking for more. Some of our writers are professional playwrights, some are teachers who also write, which amazes me because that's kind of like two full-time jobs right there. We have an open submission policy, which means anyone can submit a play to us, so long as it fits the guidelines. The first being, the play has to work for schools and student performers. That's a big one. We can tell pretty quickly uh, if a writer has submitted something they know will work for us and our customers or whether they're just, you know, sending their stuff out blind, willy-nilly. Hey, if I throw this into the wind, someone maybe someone will take it. And frankly, if you don't care, if you don't care where the home for your play is, why should we? Oh, and, uh, for heaven's sakes, please do a proper cover letter. Even in an email, tell us who you are. Why are you sending this play to us? You know, again, take care. Take care about that little baby play of yours uh, to make sure that it is it is going to find a good home that is going to actually get out to uh, an audience and be produced, right? That's our final goal. We want this stuff to be produced. So having a good resting place for it is important. For modern plays, we are looking for a majority of teen-aged characters, and most definitely a teen protagonist. I get writers who who argue with me all the time that, oh, you know, well, that's not that's not good for for high schools. Teens can play all ages, and we shouldn't be narrowing their prospects. And sure, fair enough. That's you're abs- you are absolutely right. Uh, you know, teens can play a variety of characters. It's just not our our mission or our mandate or what we're looking for. That's not our focus. We want teen stories, teen perspective. Large cast is good. More girls than guys is good. Simple set is good. Uh, We love adaptations. But before sending one, look at our catalog and see what we've got. We are small and uh, mighty. Uh, We don't want to double book with something similar than what we already have. Uh, Here's an important guideline. We're not so worried about whether or not the play has had a professional production because our plays, uh, our customers, our schools and students, they don't often get uh, produced by professional companies. What we care about is that it works in a school. We love it when we get plays that have been produced at a thespian festival or at a Sears festival or that they've just been put on at the school because that means that whoever wrote them, you know, most often it's a teacher, they have thought about what's going to work for them and what's going to work for them more often than not, it's going to work for us and it's going to work for others. And finally, email your play to us. Don't oh, don't spend your precious time and your precious money putting something in the mail. That's not, uh, that is old school. We are interested in, in getting it uh, and by email. And you can email it to us at tfolk, T-F-O-L-K, at theaterfolk.com. tfolk at theaterfolk.com. Put it to my attention, Lindsay Price. I am the first reader on all submissions that come in. Uh, put my name on it. It makes me feel good. Lastly, where or where can you find this podcast? We post new episodes every Wednesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page and Twitter. You can find us on the Stitcher app, and you can subscribe to TFP on iTunes. Imagine that! All you have to do is search on the word theaterfolk. Episode 43. What is a playwright. 
what is a playwright? I was a little uh, shocked when I asked this question in a high school class l- classroom recently and got a lot of blank stares and a couple of I don't knows and an achingly long pause before the connection was made between plays and play rights. Now, I have to say, I was much less shocked when I asked the next question, is playwriting a job? And can playwrights make a living? And the response was pretty much what I expected. No, no, they didn't think that playwriting was a job, just a hobby. Oh, it starts, it starts so young, folks, that, that disconnect that people in the arts have a job, that the arts are a job, that there's, they just think there's no way that that could possibly make sense. How could the arts be a job like a doctor or a dentist or a teacher? Uh, No, okay, not teacher. Teachers have their own boatload of problems, but, you know, the bottom line is that, that artists deserve to be paid for their work and that, that, that absolutely we could make a living out of our work, you know? When people don't think of uh, artist as a worker or art equaling real job, it really does become much easier for students, directors, and teachers to change our work. It really boggles my mind how easily some people think it's okay to just oh, take something out. Oh, I'm just going to change these words around and not even ask if it's okay. No, oh, you don't mind, do you? Mind? Do I go into your job and change your work? Oh, come on. You're an artist. You're not real. This isn't real. You write for the love of it, don't you? This is the point where I, metaphorically and literally, I'm literally sitting here, you know, raising my fists, but you can imagine it in your head. Raise my fists, both fists, shake my fists to the sky and say, how... (laughs) <laughs> How dare you? I am real. I have a job. Being an artist is a real job. It's a job, and it should be considered a job and respected like a job. But, all right, let's table that for a mo, and let's go back to the first question. What is a playwright? I asked this question in a workshop because I had before that been in a different workshop in a different classroom where I all of a sudden was getting the distinct and very unsettling feeling that these students were not connecting because they didn't get what I do. They didn't get the connection between me standing in front of them, you know, doing the old dog and pony show and what a playwright does. They didn't get this is a big one. They didn't get the connection between me, human being, and the play. And that I might have worked on the play. And I might have spent a lot of time working on the play. And they didn't get that writing is work. Or that writing was my job. You know that whole job thing? Well, they didn't get it. There was no connection between playwright, play, work, job. And I have to say, the subsequent class didn't get it either. But to play my own devil's advocate, because I am the only one here, who else is going to do it? I'm, it's just me talking into the phone box. So, uh, what's the name of that, uh, isn't there like some devil, chicky, damn Yankees, Lola, whatever Lola wants, Lola gets... Uh, I think so. Uh, something like that. Anyway, to to take the other side, to take Lola's side, why should they know? Why should teenagers know the answer to the question, what is a playwright? Why should they know? And let's get real. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, sometimes things come out of my mouth faster than uh, I think about them. And, or they sound good in my head and they don't come out so good. Uh, but... It is real. It's like, let's, let's make this real. Why should they care? You know, in their lives, 
whether or not what makes a playwright and whether or not a, they should treat playwriting as a real job. That's not that's not in their frame of reference. You know, why should they know that playwriting is a job? Just because I am so wrapped up in, you know, living my little life, living my little artist life, you know, raising my fist to the sky, respect me, you know, respect my job. Why? Why should I make that assumption that everyone, every teenager, is acutely aware of me and what I do and my little shaky fists? Now, I think I think they should. But that's, you know, because I'm a, I'm a vain, egotistical monster. Oh, let's try that one again. I'm a vain, egotistical monster. And I think that everyone should know what I do and that everyone should love what I do, love me, love my work. It's all a big love fest. So maybe I'm not a monster. Obviously, I'm not a monster. I don't have fur. But I cannot lie. I cannot tell a lie over this. I was more than a little ticked off at the idea of students not knowing the connection between play and play, right? And not knowing or caring uh, that what I do is a job and that I work really hard at it. My ego came out to stamp around the sandbox. These students are in a drama classroom. It's ludicrous. They don't know what a playwright is. Stamp, stamp, stamp. This me, this metaphor me, stamping around the sandbox. Oh, and pouting. Absolutely. I stamping and pouting. Everyone should know what a playwright is. What a playwright does. It should be drilled into them. It should be common knowledge. Stamp, 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 stamp. Pout, 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 pout. And again, Lola's got a come out. Lola's got to ask. Oh, I, I can't do that. I can't talk in the, a third person. Okay. I, I have to ask. I have to ask. Why should they? Why should they know? What am I to them? They're not studying me and what I do, right? I just happen to be a live playwright standing in front of them. And we just happen to be workshopping a play that I have written why should they make that connection? You know, in class, hopefully, they are studying some plays, right? They're looking at words in a book. And in some cases, those words have been there for um, 50 years, 60 years, 100 years, hundreds and hundreds of years. They don't have a concept about the process that may have occurred to put those words on the page. They're not seeing chicken scratches, balled up pieces of paper. They're not seeing changes. They're just seeing typed, neat, well-formatted words in a, you know, completed book. And if they do look at a playwright, you know, they, they're probably looking at the lives of the playwright. They're not, they're not studying process. They're looking at you know, where Shakespeare was born, how many plays did he write, where did he die, who the playwright is, not what the playwright does. I don't, I can't think, I may be way off base, but I really can't think of any class that would really get into what is Shakespeare's process. Well, how could you, right? How can anyone study how Shakespeare used to write his plays? Well, I think that might be important, you know, as a playwright. You know, I might be shaking my fist. Where does it have a place in the, in a, you know, a standard high school curriculum? The analysis of a play is about the finished product. It's about the play. It's not about the process. You study product. It makes a lot of sense. Even if it hurts, you know, my fragile little artist ego. <laughs> And even if I don't want to admit it, it makes sense that the connection between the effort of a playwright and what that effort might have been, the magnitude of that effort into a play, that connection between playwright and play is lost. It makes sense that studying a play doesn't give a student enough information to make the connection. Playwright equals real job. And here's some more. Here's what it really boils down to, I think. At the high school level, so many students find writing beyond them. It's beyond their capacity. And if they could, they could never do it. If they could never manage it, well, how could it ever be done? How could it ever be done at the make a living level? 
Now, why they don't make the same connection with brain surgery, I don't know. Well, I can't be a brain surgeon in high school. Well, that's impossible. No one could ever be a brain surgeon. It is an impossible job. Who could ever make a living as a brain surgeon? Nobody does that. They say, oh, I can't do it now, but I could go to school and I could learn. Maybe the connection is not made with playwriting because of the stereotype of what it means to be a writer in that it's already in someone, that it's just, you got to be talented and that's it. And it's not something that you could learn. So you could learn to go be a brain surgeon, but there's, how could you learn to be a playwright? And here's another thing. Jobs, those real job things have, well, they've got set rules and parameters. You know, what a job is has been set for well, at least at least a hundred years, right? An accountant gets up in the morning, has breakfast, leaves the house, goes to an office, does numbers all day. I don't know what an accountant does. I have no idea what an accountant does. Therefore, it cannot be real. Stamp, 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 pout, pout, pout. <laughs> and then uh, at five o'clock, the accountant turns off his or her computer locks up the office, and goes home. There is a beginning and an end to the day. And at the end of the week, there is a defined paycheck, right? There are very clear steps to this job world. It's really one of the reasons I don't work in the real job world, because it drives me crazy. But it's really hard to compare that kind of job that falls within the parameters of what everybody thinks a job is and compare it to what I do. How could you? You know, to the outside world, I'm, I'm, I'm at home. I'm, I'm eating bonbons in my pajamas all day. It's not real. I am positive I have family members who, who, who have no clue about what I really do or who think I, I don't have a real job, you know, for this exact reason. It's out of the parameters. It doesn't compare. I'm sure they have no idea how I make money. And that's another, another thing. Another, another thing. Ugh. A lot of people have no idea how playwrights make money. There is no defined paycheck at the end of the week. They don't know what royalties are. I've had conversations where, where you know, and I'm amazed. I'm amazed when people are genuinely surprised that, that they have no idea that if a, a company is going to put on a play, then they have to, you know, pay royalties for that play. Many people have no idea about that process. They don't know. Uh, that schools and companies have to pay to put on a play. And again, Lola says, why would they? The people who know are the people who do it. And still, those people who know they're supposed to pay royalties and who know they're supposed to buy books or pay uh, to photocopy the play, some of those people still ignore that part of the process because I think they think that artists aren't real. It's not a real job. Why bother paying them? Can you imagine if you tried to get your teeth fixed and then decided in your head that you weren't going to pay the dentist? No, you can't. Because there are rules to what being a dentist is. And being a dentist is one of those real jobs. So this whole arena of questions, what is a playwright? What does a playwright do? Can a playwright make a living? Uh, I It really has given me pause. And it really made me go, um, you know, little ego, stamping and pouting around the sad box. Uh, you need to, uh, you need to sit down. <laughs> now I'm talking to an ego. <laughs> it's, it's, this is all about me, you know, and what, what, uh, being a little, uh, ego driven in what, how people should perceive me as a playwright. And, and what's happening is that I, I think I am not, I'm not setting up the world. I'm not setting up the world of the playwright properly when I go into schools. I don't do enough to make what I do seem like a real job. And the responsibility in whether or not students know what I'm up to lies in me and not in them. It is a poor assumption on my part to think that they, and actually everybody, automatically knows what I do, um, how I do it, and how it applies in the real world. You know? 
I need to take more care. I need to clarify. And not in a stamping around the sandbox, pouting, shaking my fists kind of way, but in making a connection. I think students make connections really quickly. I think that they just, they, they need to know what the score is. They need to know the situation. They need to know the parameters of the world. And once they know, they, they jump in like nobody's business. And it's not enough to say that a playwright is someone who writes plays, because even that is intangible. There has to be a tangible connection between here is the real job and the steps that make it real. And here is what writing is. And here are the steps that make it real. And it is real as that job over there. It's different. Uh, it has different rules. Rules that don't that mean I don't have to leave the house, which is uh, the most awesomest rule of all. But it's a job. And if I can do that, if I can, uh, you know, stuff my ego in a box and really focus on what this always should be about, and that's connection. You know, whether it's my, my plays in an audience or me and students, if I can find that connection one classroom at a time, one student at a time, then somewhere down the line, that one student will pass on their connection to another student. And they'll pass it on to another student. And so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. And if you know what commercial that's from, then you, my friend, are old. But then I made the connection first, so that means I'm old too. (laughs) And that's where we're going to end. Take care, my friends. Take care.